What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Everything Virtual. We are back this week. Um, I was out of town last week, plus uh, there's just a lot going on socially. So if we just we just weren't really in a place uh, where we wanted to do episodes. So we, we hope you guys had a good uh, week. We we know that there's a lot going on. So we hope you're staying safe. And um, we are we are back to talk about VR. So Ronnie, got some game talk. I hope you had a good weekend, man. How's everything been with you? Yeah, it's been good. Like, all things considered, like you said, it was a really long, crazy week. So uh, now I guess, you know, at least for, for these moments, we can get back to just talking about games. And Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I feel you. I, I, we're, we're a VR focused episode, so I want to keep it. I want to keep it focused on that way. Yeah. But, you know, uh, considering everything, there's just definitely a lot of empathy for a lot of people who are out there fighting the good fight. So we just hope, yep. hope everybody stays safe and we hope, uh, hope you know, things can change for the better. Yep, for sure. All right. So jumping in, uh, I think I'll go first, if that's all right with you. Yeah, go ahead. So it's been a long, long time overdue, but I finally got into Vader Immortal Episode 2. Now nice. let me go ahead and just share this for those who may or may not be familiar. Um, this is actually on the Oculus Store, so you can see. there's a So there's a whole series, and I am very much behind uh, I had played episode one, I think, shortly after it came out last year, but they have already released episode three, and I believe that's going to be it for the series. Yeah, I think the um, next, the next, I mean, I think the team behind Vader Immortal, they're going to be working on that one that we talked about the other yeah, day. Yeah, the... ILM Lab. Yeah. So, so I, I got to say, have you have you had a chance to jump into to Vader? Not, it, not two. two. So ironically, so I, I played one like right when it came out, just like you said. And then episode two actually released when I was at Oculus Connect 6. So oh, literally, okay. like, while I was at the show, they announced that it was releasing. Mm -hmm. And then it dropped, like, as we were at the show. And you could check it out there, but I figured, ah, I'm just going to play it when I get home anyways. And then I just never got... So I, I actually bought episodes two and three, and they're installed on my Quest. <laughs> and I just haven't, like, jumped in yet. Because ironically, the reason I've been holding off is because I kind of wanted to play them on Revive with my Index. Mm -hmm. But there's yeah. kind of, it's a little bit annoying. For some reason, the game is super, super dark on LCD screens. Yeah. Like, so, 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 like, that. so on the Quest, it, it looks great. But like w w on the Index, by default, it's, it's super hard to see. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's some kind of a mod that some user came up with that you just have to like copy and paste something and it works. And, for whatever reason, I just haven't done it yet. But that's that's oh, what okay. I'm waiting for because I wanna I wanna play it on my index. Okay, like, totally Revive. fair. Well, I mean, I wasn't gonna jump into spoilers anyway, and, and granted, I'm only on episode two out of three. Yeah. But just just some thoughts. Um, first of all, you know, as a as a Star Wars as a fan of the Star Wars franchise, let's just put it that way, because I'm not really happy with the last <laughs> last couple movies, but we're not gonna dive into that now. But just, yeah. just a fan of the a fan of the world and the world building that you know the, the movies and the games and now the TV series can do. Um, I mean, this is so much fun. And I remember talking or doing a game talk episode for the first episode of um of Vader Immortal. And just being in awe of the fact that, man, it's like kind of crazy to be in the room with Darth Vader, right? And like yeah. that first time you see him, like, you know, even still, it's the graphics, like everything, it, it doesn't matter. Just kind of like the, um, just the presence and just the, just, you know, what, what VR can really offer, kind of being in that room. And to me, this, this really built upon that uh, because at least for this episode, there's a lot more in terms of what you can do with the force. So in the first the first episode, I you know, I it was it was a lot more like puzzle solving and just following along with the narrative. Here, um, you know, you get a lightsaber. I, I I don't know if it's a lightsaber, but uh, you you get a weapon early on, and then you're taught how to learn uh, the force or how to use the force, and that becomes a very integral part of how you know you make your way through the game. So that's what I loved about it. Uh, just, you know, being able to, to utilize other things. I mean, you just kind of put your hand out there, you use the grip button, all of a sudden, like objects are flying to you or you can stop objects from flying at you. It's a really cool feeling to be able to do, to do that in person or like yeah. uh, in VR. And it's, and it's Star Wars. So like, and it's Star even, Wars. Yeah. even, even if like other games have like similar mechanics, something about playing an official Star Wars game to me, Absolutely. like, like you can wield a lightsaber and beat saber all you want, but like, there's something <laughs> about like doing it in a Star Wars game, game with Star yeah. Wars music and Star Wars like trappings that just makes it feel special, right? Like 
Yeah, no, it, it's, it's it's definitely got a nice a nice sense of presence to it. You know, it still carries along on that that Star Wars feel exactly like you're talking about from Episode One, mm-hmm. uh, and and I really enjoyed it. Now, I, the downsides that I would say is I think the I was in the game for, for the story mode for probably less than forty minutes, maybe even wow. less than thirty five minutes, and oh, it's not that I was even necessarily rushing through. And yeah. and here's the thing: I remember the first one being maybe about that time. And I was expecting this one to be not that much more, maybe like 45 minutes. But I I just remember being done, seeing the credits come up and being surprised that like, oh, mm. it's over. Mm. Like I, I thought I thought there was gonna be another level. So uh, again, you know, I understand this is this is episode two out of three. So they're yeah. probably leaving something for the end. But, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're just left wanting more, which is really a and, bad and thing. And how, mu- how much are each of the episodes? Do you remember? Ten, because they're, they're 10 bucks. Okay. So it's it's not breaking the bank, and I can completely understand, you know, limited limited experiences for or at that price point. And I, I may have said this in the initial ep- or the the episode that we did for the first um, Vader Immortal episode. Mm-hmm. I'm getting confused with my episodes here, mm-hmm. but um, I may have said this back then. But if not, then I'll, I'll say it now. Is the fact that you know I think that there is a lot of replayability, not necessarily for yourself, but in um, you know something that's really easy for somebody with very basic VR knowledge to be able to jump into. Yeah. Uh, now this one there's there's more. I don't remember teleportation being something in the first one. Uh, so there is a little. There there was a little bit I think. Oh, there was. Okay. Um, but uh, so there's teleportation here, and um, the, there is a training dojo, I believe, is what it's called. Yeah. Where where you can just go through. Use and I actually jumped into that before even jumping into the game, so I kind of was able to figure out the force mechanics um, before you know actually being told anything. So again, it's it's easy enough to follow along. Uh, so it being short, and the other thing too, with it being a very narrative driven game, mm-hmm. you know, there's not there's not much room for exploration there's not much room to just kind of like futz around in vr which is one of our favorite things to do right now is right yeah. like you're in this world you just kind of want to play with all the different uh objects and things and, and the environment that that you have in there and you can't really do that because it's the way that it's set up you know everything is very much fixed and there's a path that you you follow and you know if you don't follow it <laughs> the the other characters almost frustratingly try to lead you on and tell you what, exactly what you need to do so yeah. again it was cute for the first episode I think for the second episode and for somebody who, you know, who, who's been in, in the VR space for quite a while now, you definitely want a little bit more. And so yeah. I can say as a, as a follow up to that, I am very excited about the fact that ILM Lab will be focusing on a larger Star Wars game. And I hope that they can create more of a, you know, open world kind of atmosphere mm-hmm. because, you know, that's that's exactly what I wanted. Right. Like these these games. And again, I haven't gotten through the third one yet, but. The, these games are a great just kind of taste or sample of mm-hmm. what, you know, a really big franchise can offer in mm-hmm. VR. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, like I said, just just it makes me excited. Again, I know we're, we're year four now of of my VR journey, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of people's VR journeys after the, the launch of the of the Rift and the Vive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, there's still just so much potential. And I think. The, these games are a fantastic way to kind of see what that potential is, especially for a future game like Star Wars. So I'm, I'm glad that ILM Lab is working on it. I think that they did it, did an incredible job with this game mm-hmm. and uh, or with this series. And again, I will speak on the third one as soon as I finish it. But, you know, to me, it's I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I think that, um, you know, I, I can't recommend it enough whether or not you are a Star Wars fan. I mean, if you are, there's definitely a great element in there, you know, the added element of being in the world. But um, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, I think it's just an easy enough way to um, introduce yourself to VR, a lot of different mechanics and just th- different things that you can play with. Like you said, you know, the force or using a lightsaber, you kind of be- are able to do that in other games, right? Like different mm-hmm. weapons or different you know, abilities, but mm-hmm. be- being able to do it within the context of a Star Wars storyline uh, just adds a little bit of touch. And, uh, you know, I, I like it. Um, yeah. I- I no, that's... It and-, and-, and like I said, the, the price point for me. Not bad. I mean, to, to me, when I think about it, you know, and, and again, like I'm sure different price points mean different things for people, but it's 10 bucks. That's the price of going to see a movie, which would be about two and a half hours. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So so when when you're comparing like entertainment uh, or entertainment wise, like value to me, I, I feel like you do get something out of it. And, and the replay value with the training dojo and now 
uh, just being able to put other people into it, I, I mm -hmm. think it does it does live up to that value. Although in the future, you know, for a, a fuller game, I would want a lot more. Okay, no, that makes sense. And then I was gonna like kind of echo what you were saying, just from my experience of playing the first one, and yeah, kind of going off of what you're saying about two. I can't wait to play two and three. Like now, after listening to you, I almost think I might short like quickly replay episode one. And yeah. then just and then just play two and three back to back if they're that short, mm -hmm. because I I could probably do it in one in one playthrough. Just like it would be kind of a longer playthrough, but it would be, you'd be one. You'd probably knock it out in two hours. Less. Yeah. So so and I'm wondering like how I'll feel about like maybe I'll have to you know update like or you can even do it with me um, mm -hmm. once we get a chance to play episode three. Um, I it, I'd be interested to see kind of what your thoughts are on the value after just playing all of them back to back. Like, mm -hmm. was the entire experience plus the dojo worth like thirty bucks? You know? And yeah, no, it, that's that's a great point, actually. Yeah. So so maybe like individual episodes might be hit or miss here or there, like in terms of value. But if you look at it as a package, like, would I be willing to pay thirty bucks for a few hour Star Wars experience? That mm -hmm. would that would probably be like a question. And and the other thing, and I. I probably need to confirm this, but I want to say that people that buy the quest and possibly the Rift S, I'm not sure, get Vader Immortal bundled now with the headset. Okay, we'll we'll have to check on that. Yeah, but so that's... but if that's the case, like it, it sounds like a good game to bundle with a new headset. Yeah. Because it, it sounds like I mean, I think the the crossover potential of people interested in VR and interested in Star Wars are probably like there's probably a decent number of people that yeah. have both of those interests. Mm -hmm. And so for someone, especially like, like you and I have been playing tons of VR games for years now, but maybe for someone that just started, this is like, you know, one of like the easier ways to both get them super excited, but also get them oh, yeah, just yeah. getting, getting their VR bearings for something that's like more simple. Yeah. I mean, you know, you never know what's going to be the catalyst that gets somebody into VR. Yeah, you know, we're waiting to, to me, I think there's there's somewhat of a fallacy in terms of like waiting for this killer app. Um, yeah. I think I think it's going to be more situational, right? Like you're going to have a Star Wars fan that's like, yeah, I'm, I, I want to get in now that I saw like the trailer for Vader Immortal or I've been thinking about it for a while. Or we have some type of coronavirus pandemic where people are stuck at home and and that that, you know, is where they're going to spend their discretionary income. So I, I don't know. I can't say that there's definitely going to be this like killer app, but I feel like exactly what you said. I, there's definitely a significant um, group of people where that overlap of VR and Star Wars interests were, were there. And, yeah. you know, this series or even just uh, an episode or two might have been enough to be like, you know what, let me give it a try. Yeah. But no, that's... Let's Let's oh yeah, yeah. but let, let's no, let's, yeah. let's put a pin in that because I think it'll be good for for both of us to chat about the whole series uh, once you and I have played all of them and and maybe we can even come back and do an, an episode kind of dedicated to that and really talking about um, yeah just just how we feel about the overall value because there are some thirty dollar games out there that may not offer the same thing so um, yeah no definitely a good point to bring up cool so I guess with that I can talk about the game that I played for this week and it's interesting kind of to i like the discussion we're having about games that are I, I don't know i guess games that are good for for bringing people into vr that mm -hmm. are, are new to the medium but also to kind of get back to you know this idea of a killer app and there are differences in terms of like there there are games like half-life alex which are amazing and super deep and you know super involved but then there's games that are more simple and you get this strong sense of presence and fun and they show off VR just as well as some of those more, you know, like, you know, triple a, uh, high budget types of experiences. Yeah. And so the game that I played today is called jar wars. And this is definitely this, it, this, I mean, harkens back to a lot of the games that we've been covering, you know, for several years now, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a smaller developer from what I understand. It, it Barcade is the name of the developer, and 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 I I wasn't sure exactly what other types of projects that they've made, but I was really impressed. Like it, they have to have some kind of VR pedigree pedigree because this game. I mean, if it is their first title, it shows a lot Arcade. of smart, yeah, smart, intelligent design just as far as understanding what kind of things work in VR and what don't. So essentially, what this game is, it's it's a multiplayer only game. 
and you're essentially squaring off against I, for me, I was only going against single opponents, but you can have up to four players as the, the video is kind of showing. Mm -hmm. So it's up to four players. Uh, there's either team or death match from what I understand. And you're, it's a really clever kind of use of kind of what you can track in VR. It's you're a little brain floating around in like a, a jar and you have these stretchy arms. And so, so if you think about what you're able to track in VR, you can track your head and you can track your arms. And so this kind of abstracts your body in a way that feels totally believable when you're in the game, because mm -hmm. those are the things that are being tracked anyways. And like right away, like the, the art style uh, is, is really clear. So everything that you see in the world is super like just without having any context whatsoever, you can tell what things you're able to pick up and interact with and what things you aren't. And from far distances, you can tell what things should do and not do. So all of those things work the way you want them to. And the, like your hands are kind of little, like, you know, I don't know, like, you know, the little uh, grabby hands from like a, uh, like a, one of those claw machines. They're kind of like that. They're just simple, like kind of like clink, 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 like kind of little, little hands. And so it's fun just kind of clinking them onto things and grabbing things. And if something's far in the distance, you can you can kind of point to it and pull and push the button to grab, and your hand will like reach out to it, kind of like the grabby arm, like stretch out and grab it and pull it back to you, as, as some of those those things are showing. And so the mechanics themselves just feel really good, and 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 the sense of presence, like I was alluding to before, is is really strong. Like it's it's weird, but simple little effects, like like you're a brain in a jar. And you can kind of see like the the glistening of the of the glass around your vision, like you're in a jar. And then you have those little arms that like are just like they're tracking just enough of your body to feel like like it's it's reacting the way it should, you know. Mm -hmm. And so and so so yeah. So this is a game that, like I said, like like it, it seems so simplistic. Like when you look at these at at some of these screenshots, it's very cartoony. It's very mm -hmm. simple. But when you're playing it, you forget that you're in the game. Like you start just kind of reacting to things and just start having fun. And, and you really do feel like you're that, that brain in a jar. So, so those are some of the aspects that I think are really cool about it. Now, the, the gameplay itself, is super easy, straightforward. I mean, most of the time you just dro get dropped into the levels. And kind of like a, sma a Smashbox uh, type experience, there will be power ups, like little guns that you can go and grab, mm -hmm. and you'll just go and, and and find those and try to try to hit the 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 other players that you're going up against. There's like little lightsaber like wands that you can hit each other with, and and just every time you hit the other player, it's super satisfying. Like it kind of you know the the glass container uh, that that their brains in kind of shakes and turns <laughs> red, and eventually it'll crack and then you can kill them, and yeah, just everything about it is super like tactile and fun and goofy. And I don't know. I just, I really had a blast playing it. Yeah. I, I will and, have to try that. I, so is, I mean, is there a decent player base? Like when you jump? So on? that's, so that's the issue. So unfortunately I was only able to find like a couple players when I, when I was playing it. This game um, is free by the way. It is free. Like, yeah. So, so that's, so that's kind of why I wanted, I, especially after playing it, I wanted to bring it up on the podcast to make sure that people were aware of this. These are types of games that I think, I mean, anyone that knows about it has no excuse to just go and download it and, and try it out. And in the more people playing games like this, the better this does show kind of the, the negative side of making a multiplayer only game. And clearly they released the game for free. Yeah. So I don't think they were worried about, you know, making like a financial, I, you know, I was just, yeah, I was just checking Jar Wars website or Far, Far Caves website. And it seems like this is their only game. Yeah. So. so maybe this is just, I, I, I'd be curious to know kind of what the story was behind the development of this title and mm -hmm. why they released it free and all of that. I mean, they had to have known that, you know, multiplayer games are kind of hard to maintain a, a user base around right now in VR, but, but yeah, like I said, I, I I want people to be aware of this. Give it a try. Uh, hopefully, you can find some people playing, and just the more people playing games like this, the better. It's also a good game to have if you have multiple headsets. Unfortunately, it doesn't support the Quest, which I would have loved. But if you do have multiple PCs or in multiple VR headsets, or if you have friends, like like 
this is a game that's really a fun, easy pick up and play type experience. So, so if you do have, you know, multiple people over, this is a fun one to pull out and just experiment with. Um, this game, it, I was thinking there has to be a way, and I, I hope either Oculus or, um, uh, or steam and valve find a better way of doing this, but it would be amazing if they could find some kind of a system to show who would be willing to play certain games, even though the game isn't loaded. What do you so mean, like, what do you mean by that? So, so right now, I mean, if I want to play jar wars or if I even want to see if people are available to play jar wars, I have to load up jar wars and get inside and see if people are playing. Maybe I'm missing a feature of steam VR that other people can comment about, but it would be super, super amazing if I could somehow, like when I got into like steam VR's home screen, Mm -hmm. If I could like almost like click the games that I'm interested in playing right now and almost like highlight them and other steam VR users could do the same. And so if there's a match, then you could enter a game and, and play even though like without actually having to have the game open first, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like, like, like let's say sometimes I get into my headset and I would be totally willing to play jar wars, but I have no idea if people are playing jar wars. God. So, so okay. if I don't jump into Jar Wars, I don't know if people are there playing or not. So, but, but maybe I'd, I'd be willing to jump in. You know, I have it installed, and I'm willing to play it. If somebody, like, if I was playing Beat Saber, hey, Damon, what's Speaking up? Speaking of <laughs> jumping in, I just thought that. that what was is going on? What are, all, what are you all doing? How's it all going? <laughs> hey, Damon, what's happening, man? Hey, just here. All right, guys, just... we have a, we have a, a special last minute guest for you. Damon jumped on. So, what, what, Ronnie, I do want to let you finish that thought. Though, yeah, I think, I think that is no, important in terms of the development of like just the overall player base. Yeah, yeah. So, so Damon, I was just talking about like I brought up a game called Jar Wars, which is kind of a neat little multiplayer game that's for free. Yeah. And I was just talking about how, just in general, I mean, everybody knows there's that problem that all games, but really VR games in particular, have with. Um, with with user bases maintaining <laughs> no worries um well and, and, and i heard so, what you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and so, we, and so that's trying a... to figure out trying to figure out um trying to figure out hey oh, oh sorry oh. sorry what's going on <laughs> all right i think we oh. lost him for a second <laughs> well we, we had a third guest there for a split second and then it was just a surprise well damon we'll get you back on as soon as you're there yeah, yeah. so anyway so yeah, now I now I want to know what Damon was about to say because he was listening. <laughs> uh, well, so well, I mean, it's the yeah. fluid house, man. It's Groundhog Day here. Yep, day, yep, so, yep. Uh, every day is exactly good, the same. Good. I don't know how you guys have been dealing with it, but yeah, every day is <laughs> no, it's it's been crazy. Getting, it's I got to me too, man. Lots of kids, so it's been it's <laughs> been wild. But no, what I was going to say though is what you were talking about with Steam Spy. Uh, okay. Have you ever used Steam Spy and used the uh, yeah. add-in to Chrome? I have not for Steam Spy. I have not. So uh, there, not. I, I would have to check, and I'll I'll check, and I'll get back on everything. But I think you can do Steam Spy plugin in Chrome. So when you log into Steam Spy, it'll give you some kind of like overlays. Uh, I definitely will do it on the web version and in the client. Yeah. I'd have to check it out. I think there's a way yeah. you can mod stuff, but I'll, I'll check that out. That's a great okay, idea, but that, though. Yeah, I think but they something like do that. that. You can yeah, do it instantly. They, yeah, yeah. yeah, it would just be neat, neat because, like I said, you might not even be thinking about playing that game, but if you knew that people were like, if you knew that people were willing to play it, you might jump in. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. Well, I do then, wonder. You know what? What would it take? Or what's? I'm sure there are downsides. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. But why? Why wouldn't Steam or Oculus post the amount of active players that are currently in there? Uh, you know what I mean? And, and I, I think they do I, analytics. I, I can think I might put my marketing hat. I think they do analytics and they, they see that it hurts sales because there's that those those golden nugget games that people yeah, kind of yeah. latch onto. Yeah. And so all it can do, I, I think that's their thought. I don't know if it's right. I don't have all the numbers. We don't have all the numbers. We don't yeah. have all their analytics. Sure. Sure. That's my that's my if I put my marketing hat, I think that's no, you're, why absolutely, they, you're absolutely right. I mean, how many how many people would watch a trailer for a game? buy it but if they saw that there were no one's two playing people online it. yeah then they wouldn't yeah they wouldn't make well yeah. and they're real big they're real i know at least as far as on the steam side with valve they really believe the review system which they've done many iterations and i think we all remember like a decade ago it was non-existent or like you couldn't count on any of it it was kind of the wild west and they definitely i feel they've sharpened it pretty mm -hmm. well but there's always room for improvement 
I, I agree. Yeah. I agree 100. Yeah. percent yeah, yeah. No, percent. It's a good point. And I think I think there there's definitely a value add if we can find a way. Not not us, but if 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 you know, just we as a, a VR collective can find a way to, um, you know, make it so that it doesn't it doesn't actually hurt the the growth of the industry, but um, no, but but does provide a way for for people to see you know what what is worth getting into. But um, yeah, no, great point, Ronnie. So Damon, welcome back on the show. Why don't you bring us home? It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> why, why don't you bring us home with your uh, thoughts on Pixel Ripped? Because I know we've been you've been wanting to talk about that for so long. I and have. You've been wanting to hear about it. And every time you bring it up, we're just like, wait for the wait for the podcast. So now we are all here. It's, we are excited. Let us know how well, yeah. how was your experience. Well, I, so I was a big fan. I, like we said, we got, we got to not meet, but we saw at uh, the mixer, the GDC mixer last mm-hmm. year. Uh, the main develop one of the main developers, and you've seen her, you've met her yeah. many times, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got a chance to actually play uh, 95 briefly uh, mm-hmm. at Oculus Connect 6, but just like the first okay. the first level or so. And, and she's a character. I, I, I mind her name is like totally uh, leaving Anna, my, my Anna mind. Ribeiro, Anna, I believe. Anna, Anna Ribeiro, I, I, or I, I don't okay. know how to pronounce her last name, so if I botch okay. it, like. So but yeah, we can, I, Anna, I got Anna multiple computers. Us. So no, yeah, <laughs> forgive us. So she's one of, and she's a big, she's a character. Like she shows up at events. She's like, she'll fully be in costume of the dot character, and mm-hmm. like she'll talk to everybody. That, yeah. she's very just, just a cool, cool person, and a cool, amazing, you know, as far as a software developer and a game developer. So it's really, really cool. And eighty nine, I fell in love with instantly the eight bit style, that NES style. And if you live through the eight bit style. And you live through things like behind me, the Miss Pac-Man that's right behind me. Um, you, I'm a big uh, arcade fan. I'm a big '80s arcade fan, and of course, the Nintendo NES system. And I, uh, Picture Up in 1989. If you're the thing, I was going to say is it's a short review. If you were a child of the '80s or you love 8-bit or 16-bit video games, and that's your jam, basically, which ha- it's it's a huge section of people that are, yeah. that's their jam that's what they're into and they're feverish well, and passionate about there's a whole so, nostalgia uh, factor to it that a lot of us yeah a lot yeah of us grew up with yeah yeah so it's kind of a no i mean for 1989 it's it's an absolute no-brainer if you ever had a game boy if you've had nintendo ds like this is your jam this is it's amazing I think the the everybody kind of said before that like it's like it's because they break the fourth wall so much and it's kind of like inception, except in a video game, you're constantly like in just in new levels and new Yeah, because uh, it because uh, explain yeah. like for people that aren't familiar with it, like you're ascent like in both of these games, the eighty nine, which is the first one, and then the sequel, nineteen ninety five, you're essentially you're, like you're you're playing the game, you're playing classic 8-bit and 16-bit mm-hmm. games in VR and yeah. while and while you're playing the games in VR things will happen around you in VR that kind of so it's like like you said the inception's a great way to put it because you're like playing a game within a game within a game <laughs> it's and, good, yeah. yeah it's it's it, the 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 big thing was that I said about when I played 1989 originally and I just it hit upon me is there's nothing like this. Yeah. One that it's incredibly unique, incredibly creative, pays total homage to everything as far as classic gaming goes. And hey, then, Zane, p- pull up 1995 too. So, they- so yeah, then we switch over to 1995. So the first game is it's a lot more uh, I think focused on your struggles to play. Is I think more center focused. Like it's constantly. A mom is yelling at you. A teacher is mad at you. You've got to like cause distractions, and that was a core component of the game. And it's amazing because it's not just sitting. If the game was totally just holding my Game Boy and playing it, it's not the same. It's the fact yeah. of like reliving. Like I would be like have my on the side so nobody could see, and I'm playing, and then like shrinking the sound down. Like that is a yeah. A trying to get the teacher, the teacher, the <laughs> yeah, teacher exactly, to not see exactly. while you're in exactly. class. Yeah, everybody can relate to that, and <laughs> the way it's so coolly tied in. Well, the thing about 1995 is again, I have the same I have the same recommendation. If this is your jam, if you were into any kind of 8-bit or 16-bit old school classic arcade, the retro scene in any way, this is just it's like a love letter to everyone that loves these types of games and yeah. this kind of artwork, then this I mean everything about it. And uh, my big thing with it is I'm I've made it so far I've made it to about two thirds of the game. 
uh, and I, I just, I'm in awe while I'm in like, a, you're in like a classic arcade from like an early 90s. So there's beat em ups everywhere, bad dudes. You got Street Fighter going, it, it, all standard upright arcade systems and stuff. So that's about how far I've gotten in it. But every level lives its own kind of existence in life. And, and 16 bit on, on the tertiary. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 16, yeah, and I was going to ask like, so, so I played, you know, mostly in 1989. And yeah. I know, like, since that game was focused around 8-bit, like, original Nintendo games, original mm -hmm. Nintendo games are kind of more simple. Super well, Nintendo more... and 16-bit. Yeah, I shouldn't yeah. say simple, but you you know what well, I you mean. Got like... better colors. Well, you got better colors. Yeah. You got better yeah. sound. You got better, yeah. way better music. You got yeah. uh, all kinds of, like, rotational effects where you could rotate sprites and stuff. Yeah. So. The mode so seven the, on Nintendo yeah. things, Super Nintendo. But, but so like on so like with sixteen bit games though, the gameplay itself kind of like became a little bit more involved. Like like mm -hmm. for for nineteen ninety five, I feel like it looks like they kind of took that extra step. Like like it's, the game the games that they brought yeah. to the table. Like when you're playing the sixteen bit games in nineteen ninety five, they look like they're like they look legit. Yeah, they, they look they look like they they also legit. took the step mm -hmm. up. Yeah, they t it's completely legit. If you could, if no one knew anything about 16-bit like SNES games and Sega Genesis and stuff like that, yeah, and you tried to bring it, it's totally legit. So you're totally there playing uh, an old school and pretty faithful, but you've yeah. never played it. It's brand new to you. Yeah. But while the, meanwhile you're trying to uh, you play the character as David, a young boy, and I don't they don't really say how old he is, but I think he's like 12 or maybe 13, 12, 13. Sure. He's got a neighbor that's like really like always kind of like in his face and like putting him down uh he's got a mom and dad like it's really quasi kind of america americana story but at the same time like you're trying to get through these levels you're trying to pay attention you're trying to keep them not paying attention to what you're doing while still and some and that's the thing is the challenging levels of difficulty ramp up as you go along so as mm -hmm. you get farther and farther it gets harder but it's never my thing about the difficulty about this is is it's it's very smooth. It's very well paced. Uh, it doesn't get brutally hard. Uh, it 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 doesn't ever feel like it's brutal. Like it's you're mashing it out trying to get to the next level, the next mm -hmm. thing. So personally, what I like about Pixel Rip ninety five is anytime we anytime it touches at all. I mean, it touches across the board from like Earthbound, all RPGs from SNES. It's it's got flavors in it from Metroid. It's got flavors in it from uh, like Bad Dudes, you know, beat 'em ups. But it it spends enough time in each in each kind of era of 16-bit gaming that everything gets a show and everything gets to be seen and that's it's so ridiculously beautiful and amazing i it for me it was it was incredible it's an incredible incredible game so the question though is if you aren't into 8-bit and you aren't mm. into retro mm. and say maybe that wasn't your you know you're my age you're in 40s or you're younger and it just wasn't something you lived through is this still a game that holds value for the gameplay and and the artwork and and, and the game itself and i've kind of worked out with especially with vr games now is like is it worth my time is it worth my money is it do something different to the genre does it bring something new or like you know mm -hmm. uh more immersive and then two is it because it's in vr does that make it more does it make it more more of an experience is yeah, VR like, adds something to this. Is this yeah. something that could be done? Like, would it be the same if it wasn't a VR game? You know, essentially. Yeah. If this was a flat game, what would you lose? And a game <laughs> yeah. like this, and that's the thing. It Pixel Rips hits everyone. Yes, of course. It's it's nineteen dollars. It's twenty bucks. It's not an expensive game, which a lot of you know our VR games aren't. But it's not a big ask. It's also time wise. I mean, it's hours. I. I I, I'm stuck kind of in the arcade era with stand-up mm -hmm. arcades and like beat em ups and stuff. And I'm taking my time. It's really hard to mm -hmm. try to want to leave that and go on to uh, one of the levels. Like you see, the, there's racing levels. And of course, there's throwbacks to Mario Kart. There's throwbacks to every like 16 bit racer you ever played on any system. Um, and it's, 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 that's what's to me is just so engaging. So I don't, for playtime, you always hear people talk about like, Oh, I could burn through it in five hours. I could burn through it in four hours. I, I I think for a game that's this gorgeous, when a game is really, really immersive and gorgeous, like you want to take your time and you want to really yeah. get into it. And that's why I think $19 for what you're getting and just how beautiful a game it is. One of my criteria is is it do something for the genre? Well, guess what? There's this is it. This is yeah. in this genre. These There's two nobody games, else really. Yeah. 
there's no there's this, this in yeah in 89 so yeah no i agree and, that and for me that for me is, is 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 massive and huge and and the controls are crisp and it's i've handed it to children that are you know eight nine and ten and they get it instantly they just know it yeah uh so the controls are very very intuitive um especially if you played any vr at all it's like it's not a problem i i'm not i don't think as far as motion sickness i, I don't think even in the car sequences, it's really well done. You mm -hmm. feel really grounded all the time. And, and I should say, no like, this is a game, like, most of the games we cover are usually, like, standing room scale type games. This is a game that's best, like, to play while sitting. So that that is something yeah. that, that should be. You don't have to. You don't have to. But yeah, you I don't think, have to. I think with this with the nice, comfortable chair and, and you got plenty of room for your arms and stuff, it's totally okay, but it's it's either way. I played a little yeah. bit standing. I, I okay. have kids that will play it uh, okay. standing and sitting. I play it sitting just because it's yeah it's more natural. It's how I feel like when yeah. I played I played school or played uh, old school games back in the day. So mm -hmm. that's that's my my biggest impressions about the game. I love. I haven't had a I haven't had a bad level, and I haven't level design on it has been phenomenal. Um, you know, you've got like a you got blockbuster with like the old school CRTs that are set up for demo, and you can try out the game of the week and stuff. That's um, awesome. So it's not even just playing the game; it's also think, like the memories are wrapped oh, around playing. There's, there's games definitely, of those nostalgia, eras. There's definitely yeah. a nostalgia effect to it for, yeah, for yeah. people who who grew up during that time. Like I said, just being I, in an arcade I, I, or or like a blockbuster, for example, like like mm -hmm. that that yeah, feeling alone makes it feel like something I would want to play. I would say at least a dozen times had yeah. just rushes of emotion and like memories from being younger and being a kid and just playing and going to arcades and going to anything in the early nineties. And it does a just a phenomenal job. I can't say enough about Pixar Up 95. I think yeah. it's just, it's just a, if it's your, if it's your jam, if this was all your jam. Now, what can I say if it's not, I think it's a phenomenal VR game and I think it's a great experience and it's an artistic experience. Yeah. That There's nothing else on, like it. Just like what yeah, you, you said. You can't so. match it. So if you're looking for something to round out your VR library in terms of just what types of games are out there, like you said, the yeah. Pixel Rip 1989 and 1995, completely unique, completely different yeah. than any other type of game, whether it be VR or non-VR. And, and kind of like you were saying, this is a game that you couldn't do in any medium but VR. So it, Yeah, it would lose something. It would lose something in translation. Yeah, so I, no. I and, and I should mention that that we were the, the developers were gracious enough to give us uh, give us one key for you. So the 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 Steam VR. The reason I mentioned that, besides just like full disclosure and all of that, is I picked up the game myself just because I wanted I wanted to support the devs and you know yeah. all of that sort of thing. I picked up an Oculus key, and I, my thinking on that was, oh, I'll, I'll, this game supports the Quest in addition to like it has native Quest support. So yeah. if you only own a Quest, you can buy it on the Oculus Store and install it to your Quest and play it, you know, without the need of a PC, which is amazing. Yeah, and right. then, and then you also get cross buy, so you can install it. So my thinking was, well, I'll get I'll get it on Oculus so that I have the the Quest version, and then I can also play it on Revive with my Index. Now the only issue I had, and I've only tried it a couple times, is that for whatever reason I couldn't get the game to work properly using Revive. So, really? yeah, and and I've I've very rarely been able to like had issues with games in Revive, but for whatever yeah. reason it was hitching a little bit. But I was able to get through some of the intro, and then mm -hmm. basically when it got ready to go to like the real first level, it just hard locked and just booted yeah. out of the game. Did you did you pull it up on on Link? Um, no, I I haven't pulled it up on Link. So that's so that's so I can pull it up on Link, yeah. like you said. Yeah, see, that's probably the solution. Like. In general, I wanted. I was trying to use my my index, but yeah. I can I can pull it on Link or the, honestly, I don't mind pulling it up on the Quest either. So like, I'm gonna play it soon. That's, but I just wanted to mention thing. that. Yeah. yeah, no, no, that's a great that's a great value and a great feature. But I think the big thing for me is it's great to be able to pull up a game like this on an OLED screen like Quest, and then do the contrast and compare on the index and kind of yeah. look back and forth. And the and the crazy thing is. Is that it looks great on both. It it's one of these games that's just the bright colors and the poppiness of it looks phenomenal on the index. It's so crisp. You can see, you know, the scan line of the CRTs. It looks amazing. 
uh i think that it's phenomenal but it's still on that oled screen at 72 frames on link mm -hmm. looks just as good if not in different ways but they yeah. both look phenomenal so that's it's the weird thing of like they've just done a really good balance between the two and you're not losing one what's going with the other but it's it's as far as link games go and i'll throw this in this is kind of a hint for later but for virtual desktop doing this wirelessly is probably a top five link game or if, you know doing the, the the quest through virtual desktop wirelessly from your steam computer or uh you know your uh using, yeah uh, oculus so yeah. this is a five top five as far as games that play really well and are like made for wireless streaming of us virtual desktop i would put this if you have virtual desktop really you don't okay. care anything about that and you have virtual desktop and you use that and you're looking for a great game that will stream wirelessly and it works well look no further yeah Pixel cool. yeah awesome. absolutely Cool, man. Well, I, I have to say, I mean, you've been talking about this game for a while. I do remember, I don't know if I met personally the, the developer, but I do remember sure. seeing her at the convention. And yeah. I, it's it's funny because, like, I feel a little foolish now having missed out on what the hype of this game was. I, I We've been waiting so long to do this review that I was kind yeah. of just keeping my, my, my head in the sand for the longest time. And yeah. now actually seeing it, I, I feel like a fool for not having jumped in earlier. So, uh, Ronnie, it's, thank you for that tip of the Oculus because I'll probably end up uh, diving into I it. Think it's an instant, well. I think it's an instant yeah. buy and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it on, um, on Oculus so that I can mm -hmm. have it on the Quest because I just like, I like being able to hop in there. It's a quick, you can pop in. Yeah. Play and I level. played, and I played yeah. it on the. I should say, I pl I think I played it on the Quest when I was at oh, Oculus oh, yeah. Connect Six. I need to okay, remember, yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure it was wild. And and from what I remember, like it was, it ran great on the Quest. So this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of made for that. It's it's the 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 aesthetics and the it's not. And I wouldn't even say really that it's. I don't feel like when I'm playing it, I don't feel like it's cartoony mm -hmm. because it's so well done in the style of. Uh, the genre like yeah I, it doesn't feel to me it doesn't feel cartoony it feels like i'm playing a game and a game and a game like that whole well, like i said insurrection that's, feeling that that's the thing with vr for me too and, and don't get me wrong i mean i i very much appreciate high quality graphics and high fidelity and all that but oh yeah like the the immersiveness of uh, or the immersive nature of vr like i don't really care if something is cartoony because i'm in yeah. it right so like yeah like i don't yeah, i don't necessarily if the notice. game if the game yeah. is well done you completely if, forget about if, that like within yeah and, and, we're talking about this earlier, yeah, like and if the mechanics are are even just decent you know you get you get lost in being a character of yeah. this cartoon or whatever it is that you're in yeah yeah, yeah. But if you like this aesthetic, I think too. If if we were to say like, if you like this game, you'll like this game. And I can say with without a doubt, if you like something like Compound on Steam, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. go check that out. If you're even a fan of any kind of Compound, amazing. Stuff. Compound's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's it's more of a first person shooter kind of thing, but it's all done in like a pixel art kind yeah, of no, flat shade. That's, that's a good comparison yeah. to this actually. So if are... you like that, you will love this, and vice versa. If you like Pixel Rip, go play Compound. It's an amazing yeah, game. Sure. So I think. Yeah, that's definitely. There's also great, and we should need to mention this and throw this out there. There's uh, arcade emulators that run. There's a virtual arcade emulator. Let me look. I have to look that up and check that out and see what it is. But it's uh, it's yeah. available Steam and Oculus. It's a arcade straight retro, up arcade retro emulator. arcade retro arcade yeah. VR yeah retro arcade VR, definitely VR definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely if you like that if that's your jam this is and vice versa I think those are kind of interchangeable as far as if they they go along well. Warcade being another one on Steam. So that's definitely, this has definitely got this area covered as far as that genre and people. So yeah, I, I, I can't say enough great stuff about it. I can't wait to get back in it and play more. Like I said, I'm about two thirds of the way through. I'm on an arcade level um, right before the end. So I still got a little bit more ways to go. But like I said, it's, 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 uh, every day is Groundhog Day. So working kid, you know how it is. But it's, I, I, every chance I get trying to, hey. Quick, you know, quick contra Not, it's not really a controversial question, but just before we wrap it up, I just was curious. Have you, have you played it on both the Index and the the mm -hmm. Oculus? I played uh, on virtual. De I played on virtual desktop. Okay. Stream, stream from the computer. So my, so this is my question because I haven't had sure. a chance to really spend a ton of time with it on Quest yet. Um, what? How do you feel like the uh, the joysticks and the buttons on the Index hold up in a game like this versus the touch controllers? I think. I, I think they do quite well I, okay. because the sticks, I mean, the sticks, I, do I like the sticks better on a, on a, on a Rift uh, S or the, the same sticks that you use on the Quest? Yeah, the sticks are phenomenal. I mean, yeah, they've always been perfect. But the the sticks on the original Rift, Rift, the original Rift sticks were phenomenal. Yeah. So that was 
that's uh, yes, of course. My kids definitely. This is one thing I'll throw out. My kids love the using it on the Quest because the controls are a little smaller. It fits their hands better. Yeah, so I've noticed for, that. With, for, I've noticed yeah, the index. Them, the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So index for gun stuff or like Candyland type things for the little kids. Like my 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 third uh, third oldest daughter who's six. She's more of the Candyland type shoot stuff. Or, and Beat Saber. Beat Saber doesn't care. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I, for this, this, a game like this where it's all about holding the controls like this, if you have both, again, we always talk about if you have both, uh, I think the controls are a little better on doing with uh, an Oculus Quest or a Rift S. Okay. No, that, I just feel like Oculus users might appreciate knowing that, that they're like games like this, like that are more traditional type. Like I feel yeah. like, uh, like the Oculus touch controllers feel a little bit more like a traditional controller. So since you're playing yeah. like, you know, yeah, since you're playing old school games, yeah. it might might be a little and bit And that better, was one but... thing too. I, I didn't I, when I played it, I I wasn't really trying to really there's not really there's not individual digits uh with with uh support, but you don't really need it. There's no. not really a part in the game when you're mm-hmm. like, Oh, I wish I could, you know, use my fingers. So that it's not it doesn't really work kind of work like that. But I think it's for what it does, I, and I think the index controllers it's still very, very good. Cool. gameplay they, they definitely spend a lot of time and energy optimizing it for that mm-hmm. so it's it's pretty yeah. comfortable but yeah if you guys want to i I'm, I'm ready to move on if you want to just those last little nuggets and then we can uh kind of start i don't know how long do you guys usually i don't even know how long it kind of goes both ways it kind of goes uh long and short and quick and yeah fast. well we, we were gonna we were gonna wrap this one up i think that we okay. covered everything we had but um yeah it was good. It was good to finally talk about Pixel Art. I, like I'm actually kicking myself right now yeah. just because I I, I want to go. I want to go try it out. No, so, and you're making you talking about it, Damon, makes me want to go pull out my quest now and just like get you give come the over. Quest you guys, hey, when this all's all over, you guys come over. We'll get Galaga going. We'll get Miss Pac-Man going. <laughs> Sounds we'll like old, time, man. real. Old that time. would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is fun, but uh, yeah, I uh, I can't say thank you enough to developers. Uh, which Pixel Ripped uh, kind of let me. Pull that up here. Uh, how do you say Arvori? Arvori? Arvoir? Arvoir? They're in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. So about yes. Enough. Yes. They, they're based out of there. Uh, they sent us the key. Very thankful to the, got to play it. I'm definitely, I, within the next day or two, I'll probably, I'm probably going to pick it up on Oculus too so I can play it on Quest yeah. natively, do the contrast and compare. I just but, saw that there yeah. is a, a bundle, a 5% off on Steam. I'm, I'm curious to see what uh, if there is something on Oculus as well. But I think just getting on an Oculus will be will be probably better for the wrong, long run if I were to yeah. do... Uh, no, that's what... On PC. More and yeah. more, I, I'll say, like as someone that has a Quest, like has a... If you own a Quest, like... Picking things up on the Oculus Store makes by far the most sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, especially if it's cross by. Oh, I wanted yeah. to give one shout out right here at the end, and this is a real quick, this is a five second deal. I'll say that listen, Audio Shield. I know Beat Saber gets a lot of the press. I know Beat Saber is, but my wife's a huge, massive Audio Shield fan. And let me tell you, when I popped a Quest on her head and, I, and it, it had Audio Shield, and I've loaded up with a bunch of songs, I've been talking to the developer, and he's been pushing out more and more updates and fixes and patches and stuff for it. And it runs so beautifully. I, I, I just have to give a shout out for audio. Shield hey, on the quest. Hey, I actually, actually, just, it is, it is amazing. Oh. I actually hey. just got audio shield on, on quest as well. And to your point, the first time we, uh, Ronnie ever showed me VR audio shield was one of the titles. Yeah, and and low, exactly. key, low key. So I love audio shield. It's one of the classics and uh, low key. Like if, if, for listeners out there that want to go and listen to some of our older episodes. So right after Beat Saber came out, I interviewed uh, Jan Ilovsky or Iovsky, mm-hmm. uh, one of the mm-hmm. developers of Beat Saber. This is like right when yeah. Beat Saber first released. Yeah. And he yeah, totally, episode. I remember that. Yeah, he totally, he totally told me that the inspiration for the game for, for Beat Saber was audio shield. So yeah, of course. <laughs> literally he loved audio you, shield. It's four years ago. Can you believe yeah. four years ago? It was yeah. four years yeah. ago. We were playing uh, audio uh, shield. Like, our minds were being blown. Yeah, yeah no. So I mean, yeah, they loved the audio shield. And he's like, but how can I make this concept like better for me? And that's kind of what eventually led to Beat Saber. But like, but at any rate, yeah. like audio shield is yeah. should go down in history it's as OG. Uh, we're talking this this is the, the theme of this episode is OGs. And this is the OG. <laughs> 
pixel rip, you know, classic old school gaming. And then the OG Beat Saber is called Audio Shield and it's fantastic. It's its own deal. It's its own thing. I love them both, but it's yeah. different, you know, different I mean, structure. Yeah. For people. I mean, there's some flexibility with it too, just in terms of like for people out there that want to be able to use any song, if they have the MP3, yeah. like yeah. It, it, it procedurally generates its levels. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be a, you don't have to know how to map uh, no, your yeah. own song in order to any, pull your any song. And, and, and still one of songs and more of like songs with a beat and like Baby Got Back and stuff like that. Those do amazing. Yeah. Uh, with lots of beat, lots of drums. Those do You can try anything, that. you know, like with Beat Saber. Yeah. Like with Beat Saber. You know, the hardest song, the harder, hardest but. song by a thousand percent, if you do, is Thomas the Tank Engine theme song <laughs> on Audio Shield. You will, your arms will be broken you will not be able to raise your arms there it's the hardest song in the world <laughs> right so you put that on i guarantee you and then one more shout out before we wrap up my buddy uh, that i met at gdc steve pardo remember we were there and he had the saxophone game that you play with rift and I it's all about your that. fingers yeah the coolest thing he is he worked for he works for harmonics he does music design he just had this goofy thing he decided to make it to where it was like you're playing saxophone and we're laughing we're cracking our cracking up the whole time he totally tells me like oh i just made this for a joke i was like dude this is the funnest thing i've played all day and i couldn't rave about it more well he across twitter at the beginning of may he says he's making it for quest yeah he's like, yeah he announced like it now has a start and a pause menu and now it feels real like that's mm -hmm. when you know it's getting real like that's how developers look at stuff so <laughs> i just want to give a shout out for that and say i'm i'm excited because the game is just it's really cool. You got the Oculus, yeah. uh, you know, Rift S, uh, yeah, yeah. web controllers, and you're trying to make the different kind of like notes and stuff. And if you make it wrong, it sounds weird. I, and I, I wonder, yeah. is it is it accurate to playing an actual saxophone? Is there is you there? You should see a picture of Steve Pardo in a room full of 14 saxophones. He plays every saxophone known to man. He's like his like hmm. his thing. He's a he's a you know musician, but he's uh, a sax guy. No, because I, I you mean, gotta check him out. That that there's there's a, another yeah. element of like education yeah. and value to that, right? Like if you can. Yeah can can start to practice your your what is it called like your um yeah memory, well you have your yeah, fingers muscle set. memory yeah mu muscle, muscle memory muscle yeah memory, like, I, learning I played, all that I, played played trumpet. Trumpet. I, I didn't ever play Same, saxophone yeah. but i but yeah you have to get your fingers just right when you play each note and then lift up and i thought it was pretty cool, really cool. everybody right, he well, said it was the, i thought it was a great i just want to give a shout out and say i'm really that's definitely that's a cool. day i'm day excited day. about that yeah let's, I, let's, yeah let's keep an eye on yeah for sure and and it really if uh we don't know anything that's going to come out like you have to submit over to oculus and they review it and they we do a whole process and everything so i always yeah. have kind of a thing of where i'm saying even if it does or it doesn't it's still there's still a lot of different avenues there's itch out there there's side quests there's a lot of different ways to get a lot of great stuff mm -hmm. so definitely want to give a lot of a spread but i want to say thank you to, to you guys thank you so much for for having me on and i'm, I'm just honored to be able to play pixel ripped for sure. Man. Well, it's always fun to chat. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, Ronnie Damon will be back on Friday with some news. So I think there's a lot to catch up on since we didn't really chat last week. But until then, yeah. guys, stay safe. Have a great week. And we will talk to you again very, very soon.